Welcome to the machine learning series. Our first algorithm will be one of the simplest algorithms but also one of the most important and widely used one, linear regression. Let's dive into it. Do you remember the housing example we discussed in the previous video for supervised learning technique? Let's look into it again. Suppose you are looking at houses. Each house has a feature like the number of rooms, location or the size of the plot and of course each house has a price, right? Naturally, bigger houses or houses in premium locations tend to cost more. Now, linear regression is simply about finding the best straight line relationship between those features and the price of the house. For example, if we just consider house size, linear regression will try to fit a line that best explains how price changes with size. That line then helps us predict the price of a new house just by looking at its size. We will use a built-in data set called the California Housing Data Set for building the linear regression model in today's demo. This data set contains information about different districts in California such as the average number of rooms per house, average number of bedrooms, population in that district, average income of residents, location coordinates and more. We will be teaching our model Given these features like rooms, income and location, can you predict the house price in that area? Let's start coding this in 5 simple steps. The first step is to set up the environment by bringing in the libraries and modules we need. In Python, libraries and modules are like ready-made toolkits. They contain useful code that we can directly use instead of writing everything from scratch. First, we need pandas which helps us handle our data in a clean table-like format, just like Excel. Let's import that. Then, we need Skykit Learn, one of the most popular machine learning libraries in Python, which gives us ready-made algorithms, datasets, etc. We are going to use a ready-made dataset, California House Price dataset, for our demo, so let's import that. Next, we need to divide our dataset into training data and testing data. For that, we need a module named train test split from sklearn. Let's import that as well. And finally, let's import what is required to implement our linear regression algorithm from scikit-learn library. The next step is to load the dataset. For this example, we'll use the California housing dataset. How are we going to store this data once we load it? We can't just keep thousands of numbers floating around randomly, right? We need a proper structure. And the best way is to store it in a table-like format, where we have horizontal rows and then vertical columns just like in Excel. That's exactly why we we'll use a data frame from Pandas. It gives us a clean tabular structure to our data. First, let's fetch the housing data and load it as a data frame named df. Now, let's check how the loaded data looks like. This head helps us see the first 5 rows of the data. But it, it can also be used to check the first 10 rows of the data. Can you do some research and let me know in the comments how to check the first 10 rows of the data? Let's execute this. Okay, here is our data. Here we have horizontal entries 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we have vertical columns as well, right? Now, what do these columns represent? The med inc column represents the median income of the people living in that district. That is how much money people earn there on average. Then house age represents the median age of the houses in that district. This gives an idea of whether the houses are old or newer ones. Then average rooms represents the average number of rooms per household. Then average bedrooms represents the average number of bedrooms per household. Population represents how many people live in that district. Then average occupancy represents the average number of people living in the house. Latitude and longitude represents the exact location of the district on the map. Then comes a very important aspect that is median household value. 
that is the median house value in hundred thousand dollars. That's what we want our model to predict. Now, step three is to split our data set into two parts. That is X and Y, features and target. What are they? X is the input data called the features. It includes everything we know about a housing district, like income, number of rooms, population, location, etc. Y is the output we want to predict. In our case, it is the house value. We need to drop the target column from the data to get the features and store it as X. Let's do that. We are dropping the target column med house value and then storing it as X. So X becomes the feature. Now the dropped column that is the target value becomes a Y. So Y is the target column that is med house value. So now why do we need to separate them? Because our model has to understand how the target value that is house price is correlated with the features and has to understand the patterns, right? So we are doing this. Let's execute this. We reach step 4. It is to train our model. Before training, we need to split the data again into two parts. That is training data and testing data. But why do we need to split? Think of it like preparing for an exam. You prepare with the help of your textbooks, right? This is similar to the training data. The model learns patterns from it. Then you take a test with a set of new question paper, right? This is like testing data to check if the model actually learned or if it just memorized the training set. How are we going to do this? Using a function called as train test split. It helps to split the X and Y, that is features and target, we created in the previous step into X and Y, that is features and target separately for training and testing. Let's do that. Here, X train, Y train refers to the training set, that is, features and answers the model will learn from. X test and Y test refers to the testing set, features and answers we keep aside to evaluate how well the model performs on unseen data. How are we going to split this? Let's reserve some 20% for testing and use the remaining 80% for training. This is mentioned using the parameter test underscore size. Here we are using another parameter named random state. This is just to make sure we get the same split every time we run the code. So results are consistent right now for our visibility. Should we use the value 42 only for this or shall we use any other value as well? Please let me know in the comments. Now comes the most exciting part of step 4 that is actually training our model. Now first let's create a model that is linear regression model. Think of this as getting a student who is blank and ready to learn. Now we need to really train the model with the help of the training data. So that is with the help of fit function. So what is it going to do? This is where the real learning happens. The model looks at the training data, the features that is X train and the correct answers Y train and it tries to figure out the best relationship between them. In our case, it's like learning how income, rooms, population and other features are related to house prices. Now after training, we need to find out how well it has learned from the data, right? For that we use score. So if we score the data using X train and Y train, we'll understand how well the model has learned on the training data. This gives us a number between 0 and 1, where values closer to 1 mean the model has done a good job fitting the training data. Now let's run this and check how our model has learned the data. The value we got is 0.61. This indicates that 61% of the information the model has learned. Is it possible to improve our model? Yes, definitely. To understand such advanced techniques, Interview Kickstart has a top-notch program curated by Fang Plus mentors who have built these ML systems themselves in the companies you dream to enter into. Please check the description below to know more about the program and to attend the webinar that gives you to the A to Z information about this. Now, as a part of final step, it's time to test our model using the 20% of data we reserved for this. Let's do that. 
here we make predictions on the x test data using our trained model named model and find the corresponding y values and store it as y underscore pred let's check the score of these test predictions how will we check the score like we have done for the training data here we are using the testing data to find out the score of the model let's execute this our training score was 61% remember now the test score is 57% this means our model has learned some patterns from the training data and is able to make decent predictions on the new data let's do a quick recap of what we have learned today we built a linear regression model to predict the house price data in five simple steps first step is to set up the environment by importing the required libraries and modules Step 2 is to load the data as a data frame of rows and columns giving a tabular structure to the California data set from SkyKit Learn library. Now step 3 is to split the loaded data into features and target that is x and y. Step 4 is to split the data into training and testing data followed by training the model by fitting on the training data. Step 5 is to test the model's performance using the test data. Try linear regression model on another data set and let me know if you are able to build the model successfully. Please check the description below to download this collab notebook for your reference. Stay tuned to decode the next ML algorithm. Thank you.